Well, good, good morning. morning. I'm a lot louder than everyone else, so I'll back that up a little bit. Um, I'm, I'm glad, glad to see everybody here, and for those who sat up near me this morning, morning um, sorry, sorry about the fan. fan. Uh, turned it up a little bit because I tend to get a little warm. Um, but uh, again, man, I'm glad to see everybody here, and for those of you who are watching online, um, whether that be sickness, injury, whatever that is, uh, we're glad that you guys are here with us um, too. I hope that you guys had an amazing week and that it was full of plenty of opportunities to serve God in the mission he has called you into, and that you were able to love someone who desperately needed to know and see the love of God. Right, because that's our, our main mission is to, to shine God's light into our world. And if you are not aware, our world is a, a broken place right now and could use all of Jesus in hand. Um, but this morning we're in week two of our Standing Firm series. Uh, last week we looked at the will of God. Right, And luckily for us, God doesn't make us wonder about that or question that he gives us exactly what his will is in john chapter 6 verse 40 jesus says for my father's will is that everyone who looks to the son and believes in him shall have eternal life and i will raise them up the last day now i love that verse uh, for many reasons one god tells us exactly what his will is we don't have to wonder we don't have to search for it there it is what is God's will? If we're going to stand firm, what, is, what are we standing firm on? And, and well, it's right there. Is that everyone? Now, I want to kind of unpack this word, everyone. It's an all-encompassing word. It means every one. Now, that's easy for us to wrap our minds around of until we kind of break that down a little bit. Everyone uh, reaches from the person you love the very most to the person that vexes you the most. Right? We can all think of those people almost immediately, right? especially that, that one family member that when the phone rings, you, oh, you, you cringe. You, you let it ring a couple extra times just in case they don't want to leave a message. Um, if you haven't figured out who that person is, <clears throat> it might be you. Um, no, I'm just kidding. But that's what everyone is. Everyone means everyone. God's will is for everyone to know him. And to not just know him, but know him intimately like we do, so that they would have salvation. And salvation means an eternity with him. Right? Everlasting bliss, no more pain, no more suffering, no more energy. And just joy. That's what God's will is. It's for everyone to know him and to spend an eternity with him. Now this week we're going to be studying uh, what it looks like to stand firm in God's works. Now, now, that's, that's important. important. Stand firm in God's works, not in your works. But we're, we're going to unpack that as we go. go. Before we do, let's open up with a word of prayer. Uh, Dear Heavenly Father, God, God as, as we begin to dig in uh, this morning and make, make every ear read, uh, ready to hear, every mind ready to understand, and every heart made ready to accept your message today. May the spirit of wisdom and understanding flow openly and freely. And God, may you bless everyone that hears your word. God, we thank you. We love you. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, the greatest work that God could have ever done for us, he's already done. Right? He, the best thing he could ever do, he's already done it. And in his immeasurable uh, love, God saw fit to give us a way back to him and to his good graces. And we find this in John chapter 3, verses 16 through 18. Jesus said, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have what? Eternal life. For God did not send his Son into this world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned. But whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. So this is God's work. Like the best thing God could have ever done, this is it right here. Right? He's already done it for us. He's done all the legwork for us. And, and it, it is in the work done by Christ on the cross that we can begin to understand what it looks like to stand firm in his works. 
Right? You see, God loved his creation so much that he was willing to sacrifice himself in order to bring a sense of peace and forgiveness between himself and his creation. Now, I hope that you've been paying enough attention that you've caught all the things that God is doing and has done. Now, understand that there's nothing that you have done that, that guarantees you that eternal uh, life, right? We, we, we make our confession, right? We, we follow Christ. We're baptized in that. Outside of that, that one decision that you make, but that one decision simply enters you into God's work, work he's already done for you. God's still doing all of the legwork, but for some reason, he's extended a hand and said, come on, you can come with me. Now, as Christians, we strive to imitate Christ in everything we do, or at least that's our hope. And then this has to include the act of ultimate forgiveness that is found in Christ alone. This requires action on our parts. And this will be easier said than done. However, by doing our very best to imitate Christ, we are in return fulfilling God's will for his people by introducing Christ into a dark and broken world. Look at John chapter 9, verses 4 through 5. As long as it is day, we must do the works of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. We walk by faith in Christ. We are, in fact, the light unto the world. You are God's representatives. Or how about you are God's ambassador to the world? Without you, that person may never have a chance to to encounter God. That is the way we should look at every encounter we have is as if, if it wasn't for you, if you weren't there, they might not. Right? That idea that if you only had one day left, one day left on this earth, what would you do? So how do we stand firm in God's works? First, you must praise God in everything. Praise God in everything. Paul lays it out for us in Romans chapter 8, verse 28. Paul says, And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Again, not your purpose, his purpose. If we understand this verse, uh, then we have to come to grips with the idea that praising God in the hard times is something that is not just suggested, it's more of a guarantee. See, it's, it's easy to praise God when everything is going the way you think it should. But in the moment that your life turns from bliss to a living nightmare, that is when you find out how deep your faith in God really is. I have a friend um, who suffered one of the greatest losses I think any parent could. Um, their son committed suicide. And they have suffered um, from that very moment till today. But well, one thing that, that they relied on was their faith in God. So that no matter how bad it got, no matter how dark it got, they knew for a fact God was there. It was the only reason they could wake up in the morning. It was the only reason they could take that next step. See, and it was in that suffering. And I don't think you, you can suffer any greater loss than that of a child. But it was in that suffering that their faith was not only tested, but it grew deep. And it grew wide. Talk about a foundation on solid service. No matter the storm of life, they knew for a fact they could survive it. The hardest thing that she ever had to do was give God praise in that moment. Now, we have to continually chase after God. We talked about that in the last series because uh, when we chase after God, then we are not focused on chasing after worldly things because, well, God calls us past worldly things. Now, this is one way that we can begin to praise God in everything because when God is in everything, uh, then, you know, he's the only thing you know. I like the way uh, Pastor Rick Warren put it. He said, happy moments... Praise God. Difficult moments, seek God. Quiet moments, worship God. Painful moments, trust God. 
every moment. Thank God. Now, now you may be saying, saying well, that's really, really easy to say, say right? You, you don't, don't know what I've suffered. suffered. thing you may not know about uh, Pastor Rick Warren is his son committed suicide. And it was after that he wrote um, several articles and, and things that he put out, and that's where this comes from. It was in his suffering through this, he came up with this idea that in the happy moments, you praise God. In the difficult moments, you seek him. Quiet moments, worship God. Painful moments, trust God. In every moment, thank God. Because it's in the painful moments that we are wrapped up and we cannot see further than what's right in front of us. Right? We get lost in what's called, uh, I call it the fog of war. You can't see past what's going on right in front of you. You just have to trust that God's purpose, God's plan is bigger and greater than yours. And no matter what you're going through, that you're going through that for a reason. Now, that reason may not make sense in that season, but there will come a day that what you have gone through will be your opportunity to minister to someone else. God's always got a plan. We just have to trust in it. See, in my life, the idea of uh, praising God in everything was not easily reached. And in all honesty, there are still times I get angry at God because of the way things go and they don't line up with the way I think they should be going. The problem with that is because um, I get angry be because I've taken my focus off of God and put them on worldly things, things that I think. The problem with I think is, well, I think pretty selfishly. I don't think too far in advance. God knows what's coming. There's a reason for everything. Now, this has um, only ever led for me to times of depression and sorrow. But there's always that moment where in the midst of everything going on, I get that godly whisper, right? That feeling, that understanding, that says, don't worry, I've got this. And I have that moment, well, of course you do. And I begin to focus back on God. And surprisingly, the issue I was having seems to not be as big as it once was. I don't have a picture up there because I didn't think about it until uh, just right now. But there's uh, one of my favorite paintings of all time. Um, it's by a Japanese artist. It's this picture of this giant wave. And in the background, in the center of the picture is uh, a mountain. And it looks super tiny. The thing is, is that's Mount Fuji. It's one of the tallest mountains in the world. And the, the purpose behind this painting was to, the storm of life may seem bigger than anything in the world, but when you have the right perspective, it's rather small in the grand scheme of things. So in the midst of a storm, trust in the cross. The cross may seem small, but I promise on the other side of the storm, it's the biggest thing you'll ever encounter. Right? This is not something that's difficult to understand, but difficult to apply. And I know that. Oh, trust me. Now, the second way that you can stand firm in God's works is when we forgive others. Now, this is a part where I'm probably going to step on some toes, and that's okay. Um, that's what we're here for, right? Now, I know that this can be difficult, and at times it may even seem impossible because I have no idea what that person has done to you or said to you or, or whatever it may be. But God has the answer for us in Matthew chapter 18, verses 21 and 22. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who has sins against me? Up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but 77 times. Or some of your translations say 70 times seven. So here's the deal with that. Whether it's 70 times seven or 77 times, it's impossible to do without God. It's impossible to do without the love of Christ in your heart. And this doesn't mean over time. This is every single day, right? Because God's mercies are new every what? Every morning. So this is just a day. You were to forgive them 77 times a day or 70 times 7, which for those who are terrible at math like me, that is 490 times a day. Now this 490, this is important uh, because it's the numerical value of the biblical Hebrew word tamim. Now tamim uh, means to complete, perfect, or finished. A person who can't forgive will always live an imperfect or unfinished, incomplete life that lacks true understanding of the finished, gracious work of the cross. 
490 is also the value of the Hebrew word or phrase, let your heart be perfect. It's found in 1 Kings 8.61. See, forgiving helps to make us complete and is key to perfecting our heart. Now, we all understand that we're supposed to forgive those who hurt us or insult us. This is not new to the Christian walk. And as a matter of fact, Jesus was always teaching the disciples the idea of forgiveness. What we fail to do more times than anything else is we, uh, we forget that this forgiveness is not just for those outside of the church, right? Because, well, they don't know any better. They don't know Jesus, so how can we expect them to act like they do? But when it comes to forgiving one of our own, we, we tend to harbor anger or ill will towards our brothers and sisters. Now, I need you to understand something very important. No matter what has been done to you, to harbor ill will or anger towards anyone is not biblical at all. Period. Bold, underline. I can show you Old Testament, New Testament, time and time and time again. To harbor anger simply corrupts the heart. You cannot see through anger or ill will towards anyone. We are to let those things go. Why? Well, because God did that for you. In fact, look at what uh, Paul describes those who call themselves followers of Jesus in Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 and 13. Therefore, as God's uh, chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and what? Forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. Now, Paul is writing this to the church in Colossae, those who call themselves believers. He's saying, if anyone has done anything to you, forgive them. Not those who are outside. He's talking to church people. He's talking to you and to me. We are to forgive them because the Lord first forgave you. If we understand that our forgiveness comes from Christ. Uh, that we are to, in return, show the same level of forgiveness to others, uh, then where is the room in our hearts to harbor anger towards anyone? The answer is simple. There is absolutely no room for anger or ill feelings in our lives, no matter how many times someone offends you, no matter how many times someone hurts you. Just imagine how many times you have offended God, and yet you sit forgiven and free. You forgive others because God has first forgiven you. I love the way Matt Chandler said this. He said, my sin in the past, forgiven. My current struggles, covered. My future failures, paid in full, all by the marvelous, infinite, matchless grace found in the atoning work of the cross of Jesus Christ. Now I'm going to have that sit up there. That's Matt Chandler. So my sin is in the past, forgiven. My current struggles, they're covered. My future failures, right? They're already paid in full by the marvelous, infinite, matchless grace found in the atoning work of the cross of Jesus Christ. This is the level of forgiveness that we are to show to others. Now, the third way that we can stand firm in God's works is when we serve others. Again, this is something that followers of Jesus, right, we know we should do. This isn't a surprise or aha moment. We know we're to serve others. But we find ourselves at times lacking in service towards others. So, again, let's see uh, what another uh, bit of Scripture from God in Hebrews uh, chapter 6, verse 10. God is not unjust. He will not forget your work and the love you have shown him as you have helped his people and continue to help them. Now, I think it's really important that we understand what we just read. So we'll read it again. God is not unjust. He will not forget your work and the love you have shown him as you have helped his people and continue to help them. So we're told that God will not forget our work for him nor our love for him because of... Did you catch that part? 
Right? He will not forget your work or love for him because of our past, present, future service towards others. I believe that our world is in the situation it is in uh, for many reasons, but uh, mainly because as a society, we've become some of the most self-absorbed people in history. I'm not just talking about the world outside of the church. I'm talking about the church, too. I'm not only, uh, and I'm not the only one that feels this way. Uh, Pastor David Platt said, we are settling for a Christianity that revolves around catering to ourselves when the central message of Christianity is actually about abandoning ourselves. We are settling for a Christianity that revolves around catering to ourselves when the central message of Christianity is actually about abandoning ourselves. Now, when we are putting others first in our lives, then we are living as Christ lived. Right? We all say we want to be like Christ. We want to imitate him to our world. Well, why don't you start serving others? Putting others before yourselves. Right? Some easy ways to get directly involved with doing that is serving opportunities within the church. If you don't know of a serving opportunity, that's simply because you have not asked. <laughs> there are places where we can plug you in today. It doesn't have to be huge huge things. It can be something at like filling up communion and offering, or, or communion cups, right? Or serving in children's church, or in the nursery, or with our youth, and opportunities to come, because I promise you, we are not done. We're not even close. Now, that's just here. How about if you stretch yourself a little bit, serving in a soup kitchen, going and serving a meal to someone who is less fortunate. I can go on and on, and you've probably already thought of a bunch of ways um, to, to get active and to start serving others. So again, if you don't know where to serve, I'm going to say this as gently as I can, it's because you're just sitting there. You're not trying. You're not even attempting to try. You're just sitting. Now, God has never called you to just sit. He has called you to go and make. As a body of believers, right, we have all, and that is, again, an all-compassing uh, word, we have all got to start doing more for the kingdom by putting others before ourselves. This is not easy, especially for us uh, Americans, because our society as a whole is about as self-absorbed uh, and self-gratifying as you will find anywhere in the world. Francis Chan said, God doesn't call us to be comfortable. He calls us to trust him so completely that we are unafraid to put ourselves in situations where we will be in trouble if he doesn't come through. Right? It's this idea that God has called you to a life that will take you beyond yourself. He will stretch you further than what you can do. Why would he do that? So that you would depend on him so that you would rely on God to give you the strength, the energy, the wisdom, the whatever else you need that it is to complete whatever it is he is calling you to. But God is calling you to something bigger than yourself. So I want to end this morning with four of my favorite scriptures on serving others. And we're going to hit this one right after the other. The first one is 1 John chapter 3, verse 18. Dear children, dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. Second, 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. Number three, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. And finally, the fourth is Galatians chapter 6, verse 2. Carry each other's burdens. In this way, you will fulfill the love of Christ. You know, in a minute, we're, we're, we're going to sing a, a hymn, or we're going to pray, and we're going to go on with the rest of our day. But don't let that be the end of your worship today. Let that simply be the beginning of your worship for this next week. And if you're looking forward to this next week for an opportunity to serve, how about look today? for an, an opportunity, opportunity to, to serve, serve God, God in some, some way. way. If you look, you will find. God tells us if you seek, 
right? right? If you, if you knock, knock on, on the door, door he's going to answer it. But that, that, that needs to come with the warning. Um, if, if you go, go looking, looking and, and he shows, shows you an opportunity, be prepared, prepared for what it's going to cost. It, it will be worth the price, but it's, it's going to cost you something. And, and if you haven't made that decision today, right, right, to, to follow God, to step, step into what he's already doing in your life and in your world, there's no better day than today. Whether you're here with us or you're watching the recording, there's no reason that you cannot reach out and make it happen. I don't care if it's 3 o'clock in the morning. I will come up here. And we will make it happen. There's not a better time than today. Don't, don't wait, wait for, for the right time because the right time, it'll, it'll never come around. around. Let's go, go ahead and close with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Father uh, God, this morning as we begin to go out, uh, God, give us every opportunity um, to stand firm in your works. God, to serve others, to forgive others, um, to just love people as you have loved us. God, God so, so I pray, pray that you give us every opportunity to show your love to a world that desperately needs to see it. God, we thank you. We love you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right.